Alright, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so I am, for the next, I'm going to try to do it a little less. Uh, for, the, for the next lecture, we're going to be talking about one of the admin policy lectures. Um, and uh, we'll specifically be talking about the role of the So obviously, this is a very big topic. Uh, it can be a little bit nebulous, we're going to say health informatics, and we'll, we'll go into what that really means. Uh, we'll really do a top level uh, approach of what health informatics is, informatics, uh, because I think the main role, especially at this part of our training, unless it's something that you're specifically interested in, uh, it's important to understand, to know its role, its utility, and uh, complications and issues that might come about as we integrate health systems uh, and other information systems into health. So the outline that we're going to talk about is we're going to define what actually health informatics is. Uh, we're going to talk about what the common applications are, which we most of us probably already know, kind of get a little bit more into the details of. We'll talk about some of the challenges associated with healthcare informatics and some potential future applications and why it's important. So what is medical informatics? So we'll start with uh, just a little bit of history. So even with the advancements of uh, modern medicine, as we start to think of it, uh, in the earlier half of the 1990s, uh, and really even back in the 1950s, informatics has been a part of medicine. Um, so when we talk about medical informatics, what we usually talk about now is health information systems, EMRs, uh, but there's such a big role. And uh, really it got its foundation in people saying, how can we use computers and information systems to improve medical care, patient care, uh, delivery of health care, and so on and so forth. So some of the earliest stuff that was done uh, initially usually involved with data storage, that retrieval kind of beginning of the uh, record, uh, as well as, and even from the beginnings in the 1950s, the advent of computers was, you know, we have these thinking machines, how can we have them help uh, and uh, do different aspects of augmentate, augmenting physician decision making and, and information use. And so, uh, one of the first things that a lot of people may not necessarily associate with healthcare informatics uh, in the 60s, the National Library of Medicine uh, developed uh, a database uh, which is called Headline, and now uh, it's really fully integrated to what we consider PubMed. Uh, and but that's a concept of health informatics. So it's, more of the research side, but dissemination of, of information to the medical sphere is important for the delivery of health. And so education, uh, staying up to date, continuing education, all of that is still considered part of healthcare. And the advent of creating this nationwide database of easily accessible resources could be more easily accessible than right? probably knows. But uh, still, uh, it was a, a huge step in the direction. And the term medical informatics really starts back in the 1970s, when we kind of more formalized it as our understanding of computer systems and advancement of computer systems really took off. So it, it's been growing with the field of healthcare as information systems has been developed. But not always keeping the same pace, um, but still growing up. And really, EMRs have now become ubiquitous, even though it probably took a little bit longer for that to be the case. Sure. So it's, it's really hard uh, in healthcare to not interact with information systems on your daily basis. And obviously, uh, when we think about it, you know, the, the EMR is what we, drives our, our actual delivery of healthcare. And you can't practice healthcare without. So it's how you access patient information, it's how you input patient information, uh, and in some ways, you know, you are an extension uh, of the MR, which not necessarily, uh, it is what it is. And so, in addition to just the electronic health record, uh, we also think about concepts of uh, the, the physician ordering systems, I've talked about deadline and national life. And just a little bit more of the history, some of, one of the first and more ubiquitous EMRs was the VA systems healthcare, uh, known as Vista A, uh, or locally known as CPRS. Uh, but 
right now, obviously, in our home health care systems, we have big ones such as Epic, Cern, various other. So, to kind of summarize at the end, you know, obviously, informatics is really the concept of the study of information science. And it's, if we think of health informatics mostly as the intersection of the healthcare system, information technology, clinical, and how they all interact, how we interact with these different systems, and the challenges and benefits that. So common application examples, I already talked about the Mars. One of the other things uh, that may not be, be so intuitive, but is still part of our, uh, our decision today, is used by uh, government agencies and health policy. One of the aspects is something like clinical decision support systems. So a computer taking in various different information <coughs> as you go throughout the process of work might offer an alert various different types of uh, uh, diagnostic decision making, the, the concept of sepsis alerts, uh, management decisions, that all of that is health matters, and the concept of drug interactions. Obviously, this is one idea of how do we incorporate patient safety into utilization of a system and medical. So, some of the other things, obviously, we talked about the, the different. Uh, EMRs as well. And this could go on and on and on and on. There's so many other aspects. Uh, some specific emergency medicine examples of healthcare informatics. So I, I took this screenshot on the right hand side uh, of <clears throat> our current all board. So this was something that was implemented during COVID time. So probably very hard to talk about things about during COVID at some point. But one of the things that was uh, attempted was, you know, what if we could triage people uh, by their SOFA scores and give that information to the physician? That's a whole other, other topic. But it was something that was implemented across H and H, and the computer system will automatically calculate the SOFA score uh, dynamically for the patient really accessible to the as a call. So that is something as a concept. Uh, the concept of care everywhere, interoperability between various different MARs. Giving that emergency medicine physician who only has a short period of time and interaction with the patient, how do you get them all of the information that they need easily accessible? Uh, on the top left is a picture of the kidney dispatch system. And a lot of various different EMS first response agencies, especially very large ones, uh, use the concept of uh, computer assisted triage. And so, how, how do you take someone? Uh, who comes in and calls 911 system with a complaint and use a computer or algorithm or something effectively to try to give them the right care to utilize the least amount of resources and not waste other resources uh, more. So those are just some examples. So one of the other ways to kind of think of this and the importance of it is that the health information systems that we use is it's not just us that use this, right? Uh, they, they all, there's so many different stakeholders. And this slide is an example of all the different stakeholders that have an interest and an application for the information systems that cross health. And that's kind of why we have what we have right now, right? Is these health information systems and ZMRs are trying to give everybody what they want all at the same time, oftentimes with competing interests. So the builder and coder I want you to document absolutely everything that you can. Uh, and so the EMR system is going to try to design that for you. But as a physician, you say, I don't want to be a data. So these are some of the examples of conflicts and challenges that arise. Uh, and then there's so many safety aspects. Patient wants to be able to use this. The example of that is my chart, right? How can patient interact with this other information system on their own? And even though, you know, we are at the forefront of the delivery of this healthcare, we're just one little small piece of this healthcare. And so that kind of brings us to the concept of the challenges associated. So uh, one of some of the obvious ones that we think about is interoperability, which I brought up this. And so you know, it, it's a it's something we need to strive for 
Uh, but there's so many other complications, feeding interests, the economics of uh, if there's money, all of this. Uh, how can you say that we're just going to use this one? All the rest of the process don't get it. So there's significant challenges, but we need to continue to work for and strive uh, to achieve a system that works best uh, for the delivery of healthcare, our patients, and also just our, our ability to work. An example of some of the more recent policy changes and advances, which creates problems as well as solves problems, is the, the High Tech Act. Uh, we talked about security, it talks about HIPAA, about compliance issues, requirements. It can create challenges, it can also solve things at the same time. So sometimes it seems like you take one step forward, two steps back. Uh, it's always you know. And obviously, the concept of privacy itself, uh, especially with any type of use is accessible, part, is something that always comes in. But especially if you, if you research this topic, or think about it, probably our, our perception of privacy issues is much greater than. Out of the privacy issue, uh, yet it is uh, not uh, primary stakeholders often drive the policies. It's kind of similar to sorts of perception. Oh, and then I, I mentioned already a little bit about documentation, right? Are we documenting so that someone can make money, or are we documenting so that we can contribute to uh, an important information system and also? Uh, appropriately for on what's the benefit of the patient, as, which should be kind of the primary. primary. Uh, some other things that, that may not, and so I talked about the form and the challenges with that. Some of the other things that may not necessarily come up right away, but it's, it's pretty obviously uh, glaring in all aspects of uh, health information system. Think about it. Do so I have up here in the middle right click image? And, you know, this is something. That the simplest concept of which I see all of, and you know, if you pay attention to it, you see a lot of it too. Is once something puts in into the EMR, especially with the ones that we have, very hard to get. And sometimes that can drive diagnostic momentum, which is very incorrect, cause incorrect decision making. And you just have to be careful where you understand that just because it's written down doesn't make it true. Uh, and you have to just find. And also, we make it a little bit part of our job to say if you see something wrong in the written documentation, try to correct that. Uh, you know, maybe as part of understanding health mathematics, we need to work and study how we improve that. So, one, it doesn't happen in the first place, and two, it's even more. And then, of course, other concepts like alert fatigue. Uh, you know, I can't order any medication or, or anything. Right now, without getting dependent on pop ups, so we all know that. And, and so, you know, how do we improve this so that the usability is more appropriate? And so, lastly, uh, we'll talk about kind of like uh, what the future is. So, we know a lot of what health information system is uh, and how, what health informatics is now, but what are the possibilities? It's truly, really are. And I kind of want to think about it. It's just it's the concept of incorporating technology for the betterment of our practice, patient, and healthcare system. And so uh, there's various different workplace safety aspects. Uh, one of the things that I came across is I was reading about this, uh, someone who was trying to say, you know, if there's particularly violent individual, uh, like their own history issues, how can we alert providers uh, that? Uh, maybe you need to be careful. There could be triggers, there could be various uh, especially with uh, a pandemic occurring right now, uh, outbreak on So it's not necessarily something that can be done directly by the providers already, but by taking information that's already existing in the system, pulling that. There's examples of that that was used during the pandemic in some areas, not in all cases equally, but the concept of blue surveillance and fever safe surveillance and so the, there are systems out there that work directly to CDC regardless. Uh, there's the system in Seattle, there's the system in as well too, that continuously monitor the patients show up at clinics, the ERs, various different places. Is it like a full example of what is the fever pattern, what are the infected URI infectious symptoms? Is there something that is spiking the uh, one of the ones that I just had to 
bring up thinking about code again as well is like the concept of centralized process, uh, pulse oximetry. Right? So we have the concept of cardiac telemetry. What about pulse oximetry? Pulse oximetry. And so that could be another aspect. You know, maybe for day to day use, not that important, but for a certain disease uh, such as COVID, it could be useful potentially for patients. And so obviously, with the numerous different improvements, various different aspects we have, it is it is a limited, but we have to be very aware of the fundamental consequences of today, either in the barriers to utilizing these, these services or uh, to or the difficulty for the patient to receive the care or the provider to provide the care. And so we will always continuously be interacting with information systems. That's just how the world is. It's part of our life. It's always going to be there. So we need to be aware that it's happening around us and that we see problems and we want to contribute and uh, we need to be a part of that system because we can only fix problems if you continue to recognize them. Uh, that's, and the primary thing is, as physicians, we don't necessarily want to lose our state in the development of these systems. To take a step. So, in summary, uh, health informatics is the intersection of the delivery of healthcare on all levels and information and the interaction user with that information system. If the example we talk about in Mars, like decision tools, decision ordering electronically, uh, various different research databases. Uh, and of course, there's so many challenges with this, but with those challenges, come up. And that's it. Any questions? Thank you.